Hope is such a tricky word for people with really hard problems. What does it mean to be hopeful when, say, you've been given less than two years to live and you need it all of your life? You need it all of it and there won't be enough. In the wrong setting, hope, it just kind of feels like a bit of a poison. Something people say that makes you expect too much, want too much, things you just can't have. It stirs up a hunger and then a sadness. Sometimes too, it can sound a lot like certainty when people say, oh, just, you know, hope for the future or they seem to have kind of swapped out the words like be certain about as if uh, they're promising that everything's going to come true. I started to have a healthier relationship with hope when I stopped thinking about it like something that just lives in the future and might yet be. I realized that maybe hope was more like little breadcrumbs of beautiful things that have happened and will happen, like little fairy dust like spread around my life. So in moments when I'm in a hospital room and I can't be hopeful about the future because the future is just a blank slate, then I found that I could feel hope by thinking about all the things in the past that had surprised me with fun and beauty. And uh, sometimes when I was too sad about what had happened, hope felt like it could just kind of pop up in front of me in the form of like a new friend or someone stopping by with food or ideas of something that we could do together. But that hope was like beauty just bubbling up in our lives. It's the surprise of believing that even if you can't see a good future, that good things might still be possible because we have love. We have the love of God. We have the love of others. And man, I want to stay somebody who, who's still capable of being surprised. So for that reason, I'm a big fan of hope.